What's up guys? Welcome back to the MOA's YouTube channel where we encourage you to not just be a productive member of the MOA, but to like, comment, and subscribe to the videos so that you get them as soon as we put them out. Now today we're going to take a look at what's inside my first aid kit, which like tools, you may have a different idea what you need in a first aid kit. I want to look at this one specifically because it's the one that I've been carrying around on my bike for a couple of years. I'm positive some of the stuff inside it has expired. So periodically you should go through your first aid supplies and throw out things that are expired and replace them. So this is a kit from, I forget the name of the company, they're out of Salt Lake. Uh, there's a patch on here that says My Medic. That may be the name of the company, it may be the name of the kit. No matter what, I'm gonna look it up and I'm gonna put it on the screen right there so that you can see it. And then uh, I'm gonna cut to the contents of the case and we're gonna see what's in it. All right, let's take a look at what is inside this first aid kit. Now this is probably more involved than many people would typically carry around. It certainly opens muchly. So let's see what's in here. Here we've got ace bandage, although it's probably not called, it's called an elastic bandage with self-closure. We called these ace bandages when I was growing up. And this is standard tape, medical tape. You got a bag of stuff here. There's a thermometer, a pupil gauge, I forget what the names of these things are. Uh, I, I, I don't know, scissor clips, whatever. But there's a pair of tweezers, a pair of sharp pointed scissors, and these um, things. Is that what it's called, a hemostat? It like, looks like scissors, but it squeezes together and holds? Hemostat. Um, we've also got some razor blades or cutting blades, number 11, whatever that means. And that's the instructions for the digital thermometer and peel back, snap off, insert. This must be to dispose, properly dispose of the razor blades. Now I can tell you that these two things here the digital thermometer and the pupil gauge that has a, let's see if the light works. I, I don't know what, how to use this and I don't know what I would use it for. So I'm probably gonna take that out of my first aid kit. I do know how to use a thermometer, so I'll probably hang on to that. Oh, this must, this is the handle for the razor blades. That's, they must go slide over this and then so that's not a tweezer, that's a handle for the razor blades. Very handy. And then we've got band-aids and nylon that I could use to sew a wound closed. Looks like it comes with a needle already in it. That'll come in handy. Well, I don't wanna have it come in handy. CPR shield, that's good for these days where you have to worry about uh, control. Burn dressing. I can tell you from experience, you do not want to get burnt and have no way to treat it. So that's good, that'll stay. And here we've got some saline sodium chloride, sterile saline topical solution. You could use that to flush eyes or uh, irrigate a wound if you needed to. And there's two of those. Survival rescue blanket for uh, warmth in an emergency to help you prevent somebody or yourself from going into shock. And a triangular bandage, which you can use for a lot of things, so that's definitely staying. All right, so that's that pouch. Let's look at this pouch and see what's in here. antiseptic towelettes, 
Providone iodine prep pad. That would be for probably cleaning wounds before you do something else to them. That is gloves and uh, more gloves. And no doubt, since they're black and not like that normal medical blue, I think I probably put those in there. Here we've got Pepto and aspirin and electrolyte pouches for if you get diarrhea, those come in really handy, electrolyte pills. Yeah, all sorts of typical stuff. And this is the kind of stuff where I was saying you can, since you can find this at any drugstore, if you don't travel off road, you may not need to carry stuff like that. Um, here are antibiotic ointments lip guard ointments and, a, and other ointments, hydrocortisone cream. If you get a bug bite or a rash of some sort, there's an oral pain relief thing for if you get sore teeth. Ooh, these look like fun. Um, I'm betting that's one of those is smelling salts. Let's see. For inhalation only, respiratory stimulant, medicaine swab for sting and, medicaine swab for sting and bite relief, those two things, and then that's they, colloquially, we call them smelling salts. And then uh, a bunch more Band-Aids, a big pack of Band-Aids there. So that's that pouch. And a lot of this, this is the easy stuff. And that's kind of why it's in, the, in this zipper pouch at the end, because this is the stuff you're most likely to need to use on a regular basis. And there we go. Oh, it sounds like my customers are back. Oh no, that's just George coming back from a test ride. And then here in the other pouch, this is a whistle of some sort. <whistles> Emergency whistle. Paracord, this looks like. Stomp three, oh, I know what this is. No, this is a tourniquet. This is a portable tourniquet, which of course you should never use a tourniquet unless you know how to use it. Uh, so if you're gonna put a tourniquet in your first aid kit, make sure you know how to use it because you can do grievous harm to somebody with a tourniquet. Um, but you can also save their life with it. So it's a handy thing to have. And uh, I absolutely carry one of these all the time um, because you never know what's gonna happen. Somebody cuts their fem femoral artery in their leg and they can bleed out in a couple of minutes and uh, you don't wanna be there for that. Uh, there's a hydration thing. What's this? Liquid skin, so probably super glue. There's a pad that you could use as part of the tourniquet. I'm not sure, 100% sure that goes to that. Um, I would have to look it up. Hemostatic agent, This you tear this open and dump this into an, a gaping wound and this will clot things up really, really fast. Um, in, a, in combination with the tourniquet, you can save somebody's life with these things really fast, and I recommend that you put them in your first aid kit. Um, they can be a little expensive, but the first time you need it, totally worth it. Um, these are Steri strips for closing small wounds. This looks like a pack of three, 10 packages of three Steri strips. I added this to the kit because I actually use those uh, somewhat frequently. That is paracord, which you would have to cut. All right, let's see what we got in here. These are clothing shears that are probably strong enough to cut through most motorcycle gear. You wouldn't be able to cut through an armor pad, but you could cut through leather, hopefully, because um, you don't want to move somebody if they're truly injured. High fin vent chest seal twin pack. I have no idea how to use that, but uh, Somebody else who's with me might know how to use that, so that's a handy thing to have, I reckon. We've got uh, nasopharyngeal airway that you could use to save somebody's life, provided you know how to use it, and I do not. So I might leave that out, but I might keep it in because I might be with somebody who knows how to use it. There's some a package of sterile gauze pads of various sizes, also quite handy. Oh, hey, look at that. The instructions for the tourniquet that I said I didn't know how to use and there you go so um, it's called a rat's tourniquet I don't remember it being terribly expensive so I'm gonna actually relocate that 
to be with the tourniquet itself. Light stick if you don't have a flashlight. And the emergency bandage trauma wound dressing hemorrhage control bandage. Um, I think that is, if I remember correctly, designed to help stop bleeding in a hurry. Uh, and there's instructions right on the package to how to use it. So that's everything in the kit. And once again, we're gonna see if we can get it all back in. And the shears. Remember these were in here, but actually we're going to put the sea locks in here with the pad and the tourniquet instructions. I'm going to fold that in half and put that where I can see what it says. Then we'll put the tourniquet itself be down to fill in the gap there. The emergency whistle and the, actually, let's put that on the other side, and the electrolyte solution, hydration solution. And here's the real trick, seeing if you can get it closed again. <laughs> uh, all right, so we know that this folds in and then this folds closed. And in any kind of an emergency situation, you're probably gonna end up dumping most of this stuff out on the side of the road anyways, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to get the possibles pouch because it's probably a lot easier to cram all this stuff back into a possibles pouch than it is to cram it into this. But if you're in an emergency situation, you're not worried about putting things back. You're trying to save somebody's life. So keep that in mind. And there you go. That's what's in my first aid kit. Yours may have some of the same things and it may have different things. This is not waterproof, which is one of the reasons why I got those giant loop uh, waterproof possibles pouches to use for first aid kits. But this is too much stuff to fit in one of them. And certainly this bag won't fit inside that bag. Thanks for checking out the first aid. What's in my... F Thanks for checking out the what's in my first aid kit video here on the MOA's YouTube channel where of course we always encourage you to like, subscribe, and comment. Come back often, watch as much as you like. It's all fun and games. Well, it's not games today because we're talking about first aid kits. Now I just want to remind you that this is just what's in my first aid kit. You may have different needs. You may travel more or less on or off road. You may not want to keep common things like aspirin or sunscreen, stuff like that in your first aid kit. I'm probably going to whittle mine down to just the basics for big emergencies, knowing that I don't usually travel too far from civilization. And if I need band-aids or aspirin, I can just pop around to the corner grocery store or pharmacy and pick those things up. I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you later. Take it easy.